I'm going to walk through some sample code from the course site to talk a little about using functions in Arduino programming. So we look here in the lecture sample code. Uh, in the sound section, there's the arpeggio dem uh, demo. I'm going to copy the code and paste it into a Tinkercad sketch. The circuit just has a speaker wired to pin 5. So let's first give it a quick listen. So not a brilliant composition, but it is something. Let's look at the loop function. And what we see is that we see six function calls to both arpeggio and silence. And these are functions or procedures that are defined within this file. They're part of the solution. And we'll also note that the arpeggio function takes three parameters that are integers. So let's look at arpeggio and see what's going on. Arpeggio has the parameters start, interval, and length. They're all integers, native 16-bit integers. And essentially, it is looping over a set of note values, going up by a fixed interval for a fixed number of iterations. And on each time, it plays the sound. So a lot of ha is happening in the for statement on line 27. The first expression, the initializer, we'll see now has two different integers being declared, note and count, with the initial values of start and zero. So note will be our note index that walks up along the interval, and count will simply count the number of notes that have played. The continuing expression, the predicate in the second position, count is less than length, is what allows the loop to run as long as we haven't played the right number of notes. And then in the third term, which is a little off screen here, there are actually two exp uh, uh, expressions. Um, one is a assignment to increase note by interval to step up on, on, during the arpeggio. And the second is an expression to increase count by one. So that will keep count of each note as it plays. Within the body of the loop, we see a couple things. First is there's another function call, this time to MIDI to freak, given that integer note value. And what it returns is a frequency value as a floating point number, which we store in the temporary variable FREQ. We print it for debugging and then use that to drive the tone function to generate the sound and then wait while it plays. So a couple things to note here. First of all, we, have, we define that function just below. We'll look at that next. Second is it's a, it's a, it's a floating point return value which we pass to tone. And just a comment that tone accepts an integer value, but when C++ sees a floating point uh, passed into an integer function, it'll automatically add some code to truncate it from float to integer. Let's look now at MIDI to FREQ. And that is down below here in the same file. There's a couple of constants that drive it. MIDI underscore A0 is equal to 21. Freak A0 is a frequency value of 27.5 hertz. The MIDI system of note values uses integers that correspond essentially to, to piano keyboard keys with 60 as middle C, and this is a deep uh, low A note. It's actually sub-audible for most people, 27.5 hertz. So what we see inside the function is a closed form expression for computing an equally tempered scale. POW is a mathematical function that raises uh, x to the y. In this case, we're raising the constant 2 to n over 12, where n is the number of semitones um, up along a scale. So for MIDI note here, it's subtracted from MIDI A0 to get an offset. And uh, for the note A0, that would be 0, and the POW would just return a 1. For the octave above that, MIDI note would be um, 21 plus 12 is 33. That would produce a 12 divided by 12 would be a 1. 2 to the 1 is, one, is 2. So every, every octave of musical notes is a doubling of frequency, and then the notes in between, the semitones along the scale, are distributed exponentially between those. So this function is a way of encapsulating that idea and putting it into kind of reusable form, allowing us to sort of get away from the math and think just about the process, like how you translate a note to a frequency, and then using that idea up above. The silence function uh, doesn't take any parameters and doesn't return any arguments. So it's marked with a void inside the parentheses and a void keyword to the left of the name. And it's simply used to encode the idea of an operation that produces some silence. So there's a couple of different ways that functions are being used here. One is to provide a reusable building block. So the arpeggio function is called three times in the loop, each with, with different parameters. And that allows us to abstract away a little bit from the specific note values to the idea of a process that we can control and then reuse that as an idea several times. Silence is a little simpler, but also it encapsulates an idea of an action that can then be reused. The MIDI to freak sort of is used as a way of 
uh, creating a reusable building block, which includes both parameters and return values that maps one, one number to, or one set of numbers to another number. Um, and it's a way of basically kind of encapsulating an idea that in a way we can then chunk it and not have to think about the details. In, in both cases, the, the idea is that in some sense, we're creating a very tiny language. This ex set of expressions inside the loop of our pages and silences is a way of encoding I our idea about this composition as consisting of two different ideas that are then expressed in functions. And that could be taken to arbitrary level. There could be a phrase function that calls you know, arpeggio a number of times and a movement function that calls multiple phrase functions. It really is getting to the point of trying to think about your solution to a problem in terms of composable building blocks okay, that then be mapped onto functions in the code. And it saves on code writing. It makes it easier to debug. But also, it's a way of trying to map your idea directly into code that makes it easier to think about in terms of that idea. So what we've seen in here is just a backup. Um, we've seen functions used in a couple ways, functions with parameters, functions with parameters and return types, uh, functions used as building blocks, functions used as uh, composable building blocks that we can then uh, reuse over time. And I think all these things are good methods for building up musical compositions on their agreement.